I look at my phone and it says Airbnb. Like, I'm like, what, what is this? And I open it up and there's a booking. It says Airbnb booking, $1,223 wow. at 10.13 p.m. 13 minutes in. 13 minutes in, I had made $1,223. This is The Fighting Entrepreneur, the podcast dedicated to entrepreneurs looking to change the world. Learn how to start, build, and scale a business in today's highly competitive business environment. Here's your host, The Fighting Entrepreneur, Anik Singhal. What's up, you crazy fighting entrepreneurs? Welcome back. It's your favorite person, Anik Singhal, back with yet another episode. Today is amazing, all right? Today's episode, I'm going to read you the title because it's it's awesome. How our guest, he, he's here, he's in the house, made $18,872 in 13 days using Airbnb with a property he doesn't even own. And now he's been able to scale this and teach it to many other people. He's going to drop all the golden nuggets today. He's going to show you exactly how you can do it. The best part is, it doesn't matter where you live. If you live in suburbia and you're like, ah, oh, Airbnb is not big here, that's the best part. He's going to prove you wrong. This works anywhere, everywhere, and it can work with absolutely zero money out of your pocket. I mean that, zip, zilch, zero. You can get into the real estate business without putting even a dime in. Uh, really exciting stuff. You know I'm always out there looking for the most creative and the craziest ways of doing this, and we got connected through a local uh, mutual friend. And I'm, I'm just excited. He's flown in all the way from Florida to do this interview with us. So um, before I bring him on, though, are you a member of Learn.com? Come on, L-U-R-N.com. We got over 300,000 members now and growing at 1,500 a day. It's free to join, L-U-R-N.com. We've got all kinds of amazing courses in there, training. We're going to have some training from our guest today. We'll talk more about that later. Yes, that's right. There's going to be Airbnb training free inside the platform you got to get in there right now all right we entrepreneurs we're gonna put 10 million people in this place 10 million people from all over the world are gonna be connected in one place it's called learn.com l-u-r-n.com all right now that we've been through that man i cannot wait to introduce you to our guest who's flown all the way in to teach us how to make money with real estate with absolutely no money using airbnb Mike Gandia. Mike, thanks so much for being here, man. I would reach across and shake your hand, but it's going to be too far. But <laughs> dude, thank you for flying in, Absolutely. taking time away from your family, your business, your everything to teach our you know, fighting entrepreneurs and our Learn Nation how to do this. This is killer stuff. Um, man, I, I want to get right into it, but we do have a tradition, Mike, that I want. So if you don't mind raising your right hand and repeating after me, I'm Mike Gandia. I'm Mike Andia. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. To tell the truth and nothing but the truth. To tell the truth and nothing but the truth. And to reveal all my Airbnb secrets. And to reveal every single one? All of them. All of my Airbnb <laughs> secrets. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Got it on record. Um, listen, um, I want to introduce everyone to Mike because, you know, I, I was introduced to you, I think it was like nine, ten months ago, mm -hmm. by a mutual friend. And everyone knows at Learn, I've got this big mission, right? I want to connect entrepreneurs all over the world, but I want to bring unique, new kinds of ideas into the world of entrepreneurship. Now, I personally love real estate. I haven't done much of it until recently. We're starting to do real estate, my wife and I, and uh, it's it's stupid expensive. Like, <laughs> you know, if you want to do it right, you got to have money. Now, I've been blessed, and uh, we do have money, so we're able to get in and do it. So as I was learning about real estate end of last year into early this year, um, our mutual friend, you know, uh, shout out to Alan, he introduces mm -hmm. us and Alan's like, look, you got to meet this guy. He's making a ton of money using Airbnb. He's an Airbnb entrepreneur. And I thought, what? Well, that's, that's new, right? I don't hear about that every day. Um, but immediately I, I didn't pay attention because I thought, ah, I mean, it's fine. He must buy properties and list them on Airbnb. Well, I'm not going to teach that to my students. You need a lot of money to buy property. So I kind of dismissed it. And Alan, you know, I told Alan, I'm like, well, that's not going to really work. We don't teach real estate necessarily. It's too much money needed mm -hmm. and it's not for the masses. I want to be able to teach people all over the world. And Alan's like, dude, he doesn't own any property. It's, it's like literally no money out of his pocket. And he's able to build instant passive cash flow at a thousand to two thousand dollars at a time. I got my interest peaked. Then I ended up talking to Mike. And as you're going to see, you're just, I mean, you know, it's its a fact of matter. This is what it is. It's nice and simple. It's straightforward. Uh, I just love it, Mike. So I, I've been really blessed to have gotten to know him better. The thing that I'm really blessed about is Mike agreeing to bring on a lot of his training and education into the platform, 
which is, man, it's just adding so much value to learn. We'll talk more about that in the in the coming future. But Mike, thank you so much. Absolutely. Really, on behalf of everybody who's listening on Learn Nation, the Fighting Entrepreneur um, listeners, thank you. I'm excited. I want to move right into round number one, man. All right, so round number one. Let's get into, dude, who's Mike? And how did you fall into Airbnb? Like, tell me the story. Yeah, absolutely. So basically the story is, this all started actually in 2011, okay? Okay. And I can totally relate on it to the fighting, fighting entrepreneur because I feel like I lived that. I was trying so many different business models and this all started in 2011 when I read this book called The 4-Hour Workweek. And I'm sure some of your audience knows about this book. I think they all do. Yeah. yeah, and it was my favorite book because before that moment, before I read that, I was thinking, okay, I gotta get a job, I gotta become an entrepreneur, or sorry, I gotta become an engineer and like my whole, kind of game plan was to become you know, an employee. Mm. I read that book and I started to realize, okay, whatever it takes, I'm gonna try to start a business, yeah. right? I wanted to be able to travel, have this financially free lifestyle and just have that automatic passive income. That was yeah. my goal, right? So as I'm going throughout college, you know, getting my degree, I'm trying all these different business models. It starts with an ebook, right? I spent mm. six months trying to build this ebook. I make it perfect, doesn't sell anything, doesn't sell a copy. Then I tried uh, selling like different sports drinks and stuff. And I even tried licensing technology from NASA. Like, I know it sounds <laughs> crazy, but I went to it NASA does. Langley Research Center with a team of investors. We were gonna license electron beam freeform fabrication technology. It was a 3D pr printing technology. It failed, okay? I, I didn't even know you could do that. <laughs> can you, you can license you can stuff license, from NASA? Yeah. Okay. Um, whole nother story. Um, but the point is I tried everything. Yeah. I uh, tried Amazon. It didn't work for me. Yeah, I tried stock trading. I did my thesis on modeling financial markets using dynamics and controls like mass spring systems. Okay, I spent two years on algorithms for stock trading. Didn't work for me. Right. So all these years I'm trying things and I just kept failing. Right. So I just decided. How many years were you trying? Thinking probably you struggled? five years. Five years. Okay. Yeah. All right. Wow. Yeah. Where I was just trying every other business model. And out during there. this time you're working as an engineer. So I was getting my degree. Okay. And then I got a job. Um, working for an airplane manufacturing company. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure you can guess the US based airplane manufacturing company. Okay. Big old um, B. <laughs> Big so B. I was and I was doing research and technology. It was a great it was a great job. Yeah. Okay. Loved it. Um, but deep down I knew I always wanted to be an entrepreneur. And I feel like your audience feels the same way. Like yeah. they know that's why they're here, right? They know whether they hate their job or if they love their job, at the end of the day, there's just something in us the fighting entrepreneur, like we need to have that lifestyle. We need to be in control. We want to be the owners of our business. We want to have that passive income so we can do what we want to do, whether that's, you know, start a, a value-based business and, you know, travel the world, whatever it may be, you know? So one day, I, the second book that totally changed my life was Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Yeah, Okay. absolutely. So I'm working, you know, at, as an engineer and toiling away. And this at this point, I'm kind of demoralized because I tried all these different business models, failed, 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 right? But I read this book and I'm like, okay, let me just try this one last time, okay? What if I am able to get a property and I, and, and I wanted to basically do real estate, like, you know, buy properties. Was that and, after Rich Dad Poor Dad that you started thinking about real estate? Yes. So, okay. Yeah, read got Rich it. Dad Poor Dad. And I just, it just reinforced the idea, like I gotta stop being an employee and I gotta be a business owner, mm -hmm. investor. I gotta make something happen here. Mm -hmm. I can't quit, right? So, I was thinking, how do I combine the four hour work week with Rich Dad Poor Dad, right? Yeah. So I'm like, okay, how can I make like a cash flow business, passive income, but somehow like involve real estate? Like maybe I can make this work somehow. Yeah. And uh, it was funny because like once I started thinking along those, w along those lines, I was also thinking, okay, I wanted to have reoccurring income. You know, I wanted to be able to, like I said, to be able to travel. I wanted to be able to run the business from my phone. I started writing these things down. Like what does my dream business look like? Yeah. And it's so funny, like once you start to, you know, envision what you want and you start to write it down, opportunities just present themselves. Yeah. And it was like a couple of days after I had kind of come up with this vision that I sat down with one of my friends and uh, we were, I'm a sushi fan. So we were having some sushi and he was telling me about his friend, John. Okay. His friend, John, he was saying he just got a four bedroom house. He bought a four bedroom house. Okay. He's living in one of the bedrooms and he has three other spare bedrooms. And he was saying that he rents each of the spare bedrooms on Airbnb. And at this point I was like, wasn't really sure what Airbnb was. I think this was like in 2016. Yeah. 
And um, then he goes and tells me he's, he's making $2,000 a month per bedroom. Wow. And at that moment, I'm just like, my jaw dropped food in my mouth, you know, like, <laughs> and he's Sushi like, dropped out yeah, exactly. And he's like, I'm like, hold on, you're telling me this guy, John is making $6,000 a month on Airbnb. And he's like, yeah, exactly. And the coolest part is like, he has cleaners come in, do everything. Like he basically does nothing. Like it's just basically passive income. Wow. And at that moment I was like, okay, well maybe there's something here, you know? So like me being the nerd I am, I go home and I just start Googling Airbnb, yeah. researching everything there is to know about Airbnb. And basically my plan is to be like, okay, how can I be like John? I'm gonna go and buy a property and I'm gonna put it on Airbnb. Okay, I'm gonna try to make this happen. So that starts to get into motion. I start to talk with uh, mortgage brokers, start to see real estate agents, do the whole thing, right? Uh, months go by, finally find a property that I'm thinking, okay, I might buy this property. Down payment's like $20,000. You know, I gotta redo the lawn, redo the electric, pay closing fees. It comes out to like $31,000 that I gotta put down. Yeah. Like, and that's like, at this point, it's like all my savings. Mm. So I'm like, okay, well, you know, I wanna make this happen. You know, I'm committed to, to having this lifestyle, but this is a really big investment for me at the time, right? Mm -hmm. So now I'm thinking, if I'm gonna make this investment $31,000, I gotta make sure that I'm gonna be able to recoup it. How long is it gonna take me on Airbnb to make this money back? So that's when I, again, went into nerd mode and I started researching, okay, how can I find out like revenue projections? How can I know, you know, what Airbnb is gonna be able to generate for me? So I start to come up with all these different strategies. I, I find different tools. I find like three or four different tools I can use. I'm putting them all together. And eventually I come up with something that I now call my treasure map strategy. Okay. And basically what this tool, what this combination of tools and strategies allowed me to do was I kind of felt like I had like x-ray vision in the market. Like I could see now basically my entire city, my entire town and exactly where Airbnb was making the most money. And the cool part was it, was, it wasn't where you think it would be. And finding out, okay, well, you know, certain areas you can make a lot of money. And it was kind of like I had a treasure map. Like I could literally like X marks the spot. There's a gold mine right here. Wow. And I could drill down into it. So now I was able to kind of figure out if I was able to get a two bedroom unit in a certain part of town, I would be able to generate $6,800 per month on Airbnb. Just so from like, that one. Just from that one. And that's profit, not total revenue? That was revenue. Okay, that was revenue. Okay. That was on. revenue. So then I'm like, okay, well, how much is it gonna cost me to, to rent? What if I rent it? I just wanna kinda do the math. Yeah. And I found out I could rent a two bedroom apartment in that area for $2,600. Wow, less than half. So I did the math and I was like, after utilities and stuff, it came out I would be making profit around $3,800 per month if I, got, if I rented. A unit. So, so just for everyone to be clear, there was a point in time at which you thought, let me buy this property right. and it was going to cost you 30 some thousand dollars. Exactly. And that was going to drain out your savings account, all eggs in one basket. It would then give you the headache of owning real estate. So you'd have to be responsible for fixing all the things that need to be fixed. Right. Whereas you came at it from a different approach and you said, using your treasure map strategy, you could pinpoint local areas. And we're going to talk about that in just a second. So hang tight. Um, and now you're saying no money down almost like you just rent. Well, like, it just, just kind of it kind of hit me money. like, wait a minute. Why do I have to buy the property if I can if according to this, you know, this data yeah. right? at this point it was just theory. Yeah. According to what I'm seeing on paper, I can make thirty eight hundred dollars in profit per month if I just rent it. Yeah. And no thirty one thousand dollars investment. That's profit I could be making the first month I get started. So now. <laughs> I did the, ran the numbers a couple of times because honestly, when I saw that number, I got a little nervous because I realized this makes sense and I have to do this now. <laughs> and it, it was a big a deal. Were you worried that it felt too good to be true almost? Yeah, it, absolutely. Because yeah. I didn't have anybody there telling me, yeah, Mike, this is, this is a great plan. You know, like there was no, I was just kind of in the dark, like looking at the numbers, like, okay, well, this makes sense on paper. Yeah. But it's, it was still super nerve wracking for me to be like, okay, I'm gonna invest in you know, renting this property. I'm gonna sign a lease, right? And what if it doesn't work? What if Airbnb doesn't work? Mm. And I gotta pay $2,600 a month? You know, that was super scary for me. 
right? But I knew that I was committed to changing my life. I knew that deep down I needed to pursue that passion to have that four hour work week lifestyle to be able to travel. And it was just like a moment of decision that I had. I'm like, this is something that, yeah, I'm nervous about, but I have to take this step, this leap of faith. And I was just like, I'm putting my chips on the table. I'm going all in. Yeah. So, so here, here's a crazy part. Cause I want to bring this up for anyone thinking, Oh my God, I don't want to do that. I don't want to go through what, what Mike went through. He already did it for you. So the cool thing is later on, we're going to talk about a strategy where you don't have to do that. You do not have to rent even a property. You do not have to make that commitment. You don't have to put all your chips in. You can actually come in with zero commitment and zero cash and start deploying Airbnb, uh, which is what really got my attention because all of a sudden it removes the argument. Why wouldn't you do this? Mm -hmm. Why are you not? I don't care if you have a successful business. I don't care if you're already making money. I don't care if you want to build an e-commerce business or an Amazon business or a digital publishing business. Why wouldn't you do this also? It's just that simple. Mm -hmm. And which, which was the selfish reason of why I got Mike in here to begin with, right? Because I wanted to learn it so that I could deploy the strategy. But something I took away, Mike, from what you were explaining, and we'll get back to the process. Basically, we merged round one and round two, which is awesome. Uh, you discovered this on your own. This was not like you went to a seminar that there was some guru out there or some course you took or a book you read. This was you discovering how to do this. Is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. It was just a natural progression, I guess. Like, again, being kind of the engineer that I am, it just came down to like, what are the numbers say? Yeah. And the numbers made sense. And how long ago? What, when was it that you got your first one? Um, early 2017. So it's like a couple years ago, basically. No, yeah. more. It's two and a half years almost yeah. now. Yeah. So, and just to make it clear for everyone else too, and I know we're going to cover all of this in the rest of this interview, but you've, you're not the only one doing this. You've taught now many people to do this and to Absolutely. do it profitably. Uh, so that's the other thing. This is why another reason why I got super excited to bring you in to learn. And then when you agreed is this information is not available anywhere else because you created it. You literally invented it over a couple years of pain, um, which is so amazing. So I want to take a second here. You mentioned the treasure map strategy. So we're doing something really interesting. I have given, I, I live me personally, I live in Gaithersburg, Maryland. We are in suburbia here. We are, in, you know, I'm 40 minutes from DC, 45 minutes from Baltimore. Uh, I do everything in my life possible to avoid going into either of those cities. Uh, so I'm, I'm not a city guy. And so I, I had asked Mike this a while ago. I'd said, can I do Airbnb? Like I live in this like completely, I don't think Airbnb is like hot and heavy in Gaithersburg, Maryland from what I know, I don't know. And so Mike, has taken on the challenge. So here's what he's going to do. He's going to do a live presentation. This is my challenge to him. And he's going to live figure it out. If there's opportunity, something tells me he, he knows because otherwise he wouldn't take the challenge on, but that's cool, right? So no matter where you're sitting, you could be in a small town. Mike's going to show you how to find and tap a very awesome Airbnb opportunity. So get past your paradigm of, Oh, is there even an opportunity near me? So what's going to happen is you're going to go to learn L U R N.com forward slash B N B B as in boy and as in Nancy and B as in boy B N B learn L U R N.com forward slash B N B absolutely free training that Mike's going to be putting together coming out very soon. It might in order to be out by now where he's going to do all of this. He's going to deploy the treasure map strategy. He's going to show you which tool he uses and how to use it and how to find a area near your, where you live, no matter where you live. Really cool stuff. All right. So, so Mike, let's, let's go right back to, and I'm sorry to interrupt. I get excited sometimes. Treasure map strategy, easy to find a location. Mm -hmm. You, you, you went all in, scared right 2600 bucks right what happens and i feel like we left people on a cliffhanger here it's like you know like what was gonna happen that's, so that's what, that's what good marketing <laughs> is man that's what good no so is. basically i go all in right and i remember the day i got the keys and i'm ready to really do this so i i got the lease and i'm like whether you know whatever happens happens i already put it in motion so i spend the weekend getting the place ready you know i get the towels set up and i got the shampoos ready for the for the guests coming i take the pictures right and uh, and then I go on Airbnb and I, I realize you know, you got to make a listing on Airbnb, yeah. right? So I'm like, what am I going to write for the title or the description or, you know, what, how am I going to market it? Yeah. And that's a huge piece of it, right? So I go back to the same process, 
It's all about modeling success. Just like how we found the best properties, you know, the best location, we do the same thing when we're marketing the property as well. So I would go and I would copy all the best titles, right? And I would copy all the best descriptions and I'll put them into one document and I would see the patterns, right? Okay, what benefits are they talking about? You know, what, what are they using, what language? And I would clump it all together and I would come up with my own description, right? So I did that and I remember the day I went live with my first Airbnb. I remember specifically, it was a Friday night, pitch black, you know, on the glaring screen. It was 10 p.m. on a Friday night and I'm hovering over the published listing button. So I had just written the full description, you know, I had all the pictures ready and I'm like sweating, like I'm about to like really like do this. Like moment of truth. If it were, yeah, moment yeah. of truth, for real. Yeah. And uh, so I'm sitting there, 10 p.m., I click publish listing and nothing happened. Like nothing happened, yeah. right? That first moment, of course. I let out a sigh of relief, close my laptop. I'm like, well, whatever's gonna happen, it's gonna happen. I remember I went and go, uh, I took a shower, Got out of the shower, it was 10.13, and I heard this weird notification, never heard it before. I look at my phone, and it says Airbnb. Like, I'm like, what, what is this? And I open it up, and there's a booking. It says Airbnb booking, $1,223. Wow. At 10.13 p.m. 13 minutes in. 13 minutes in, I had made $1,223. And it was wow. like, Phew. that moment changed my how, life. How do you feel at that moment? That was the best moment of my entrepreneurial journey. Nothing will ever replace that, right? Nothing that, that can first replace that. first proof of concept. Because yeah. it was just so perfect, right? Like it was all theory up until that point, right? So that night, first booking. Next day, Onik, booking after booking after booking. Like I remember driving down the freeway, I couldn't stop looking at my phone, $582, $1,332, whatever, $550, booking after booking after booking coming in. And in that first listing was so successful, again, because I used this process of modeling success the whole entire way. You were mathematical. This wasn't pro I mean, it wasn't like you threw a dart. Oh, I got lucky because everyone who knows me knows I don't believe in that. I hate the word lucky. Um, you were intentional. And it took you, how long did it take you in searching? Because you created the treasure map strategy yourself. So how long did that take you? It, to find that it honestly just took me about three weeks to develop like all of the systems, go and talk to landlords and get it set up. It That's was like, nothing. it was quick. I mean, it's, it's something you can do. Think about it. When you go and you get an apartment, yeah. right? How long does it really take to, to you know, get an apartment, right? You yeah. just got to talk to a landlord, you sign a lease. It really happened very quickly once I had the idea in place. Yeah, and, and what I want everyone to understand is that now he's set up a multiple four figure passive recurring monthly income that can cover his mortgage, his car payments, his everything. And it's just there and it's being automated and it's being run by this other service. So I want to keep going, but I want to kind of jump the gun and ask you a question. Did, was that just, have you been able to rinse and repeat that same feeling, that same property, that same execution, mm -hmm. the same speed, or was it, did you happen to just hit the first one perfectly? Or are you seeing that as a repeatable process? So the cool part about this, and it's why I love this business so much, was that it worked so well right away. And I think it's because there was a specific formula. Mm. And every time I've just followed the same formula, you get the same result, right? Because we're not, again, like you said, we're not guessing about if this is gonna make money or not. Yeah. It's like, we know the buying patterns. We know what the best properties are, what they look like. And I'll give you an example. One of the things I noticed in, in my market, so besides the location, was that there are certain, certain, I call them patterns of profitability, certain, features of the property that the travelers seem to want and they spend money on those properties. One of the things in my market was a spiral staircase. For some reason, all the top properties had spiral staircases. So what did I do? Found a property with a spiral staircase. It was that simple, you know? So you're just modeling the whole entire way what the top properties are making. So it's extremely repeatable because we're designing it to be a top property from the very beginning. Yeah, and, and what's, so this is what's so interesting about this, right? So I think spiral staircase, I immediately think fancy property. I think fancy property, I immediately think expensive. So if in the world of real estate, you had to purchase that property, it could be hundreds of thousands, if not over a million dollars to purchase a fancy property. So I know even though you do definitely, we're going to get into this, but you teach like stay out of the big cities or whatever. It's not, it's not necessary. You can go, but even if you want to get into the big city, I mean, you're not going to go buy a place in New York for less than millions of dollars, 
But what's amazing is you actually deploy a strategy where someone could have access to that property without even renting it, like literally zero cash down. Mm -hmm. So now you're able to deploy the best of the best of the best with no money down. So anyone who's sitting here listening, I mean, this is something that's fully deployable. So what I want to do, Mike, if you're good with it, is I want to get into the we, we I want to get into the specifics mm -hmm. of each of the rounds, um, and then we're going to kind of I'm going to talk to you a little bit at the end of the rounds about some of the student success and the things you've had. Uh, but before we get into that, um, before we move into round two, uh, let's take a quick break. I want you to hear from someone at Learn telling you about some of the amazing things we have coming out at Learn with Mike about our Airbnb project. Hi, I'm Athena with Learn. Wow, how awesome is this? Mike really knows his stuff. What I love about what Mike teaches is that you don't actually need to own any property in order to profit from it. No need for a down payment or anything like that. You can start building a real estate empire with very little. So I've got a very exciting announcement to make. We're bringing Mike into the fold at Learn Nation, and he'll be doing a three-part video series teaching exactly how to build an Airbnb empire starting from scratch. This training is 100% free, no catch. The podcast is great, but there's only so much we can cover in a one-hour interview. If you think that this is awesome, wait until you see the live training. If you're interested in learning more and building your own Airbnb empire, all you have to do is go to learn.com slash BNB, pop in your email address to go on the early alert list, and we'll email you as soon as the free course goes live. Don't miss out. That URL again is learn.com slash BNB. Now back to the episode. All right, so we're going to start round number two. Now, before we start, uh, right during the break, Mike mentioned something, and that's, it, it was just me being a bad host. Let's round that up. How did that property end up doing long term? What did you make from it? Yeah, Go absolutely. It. So the cool part was that within the first 13 days, I had booked out about two and a half of my cal uh, months in my calendar, which came out to $18,872. And it was just like, you couldn't have had more proof of concept. In 13 you know? days. Yeah, it was amazing. So that first month I generated around, I think it was 8,500, uh, you know, in sales for that month. And again, the cost of the property came out to around uh, 2,600 with utilities like 300. The point was I made around 5,000 in profit that first month, wow. like right away. No, no 31,000 in debt, no loan. It was profit right away. Next month I made around 6,800, which is like spot on to my projection. Mm. And then next month after that is again around an eight thousand dollar month. So it just from took off one from there. property from one property. So for so many people listening, one property on Airbnb could replace their full time income. That's what happened to me. Isn't that crazy. Yeah. And yeah. then three months after I had started my Airbnb, I quit my job, my my engineering job. Ninety days. Yeah. Wow. So how long before you got the next property? Um, pretty quickly after that, I wanted to start onboarding more yeah. properties because you know you see something's working you want to do more the cool part about this is and I, if you want to get into the story where i basically started looking for uh, real estate agents who m might have multiple properties mm, so okay. so what i ended up doing was i went to a meetup like i don't know if you ever heard about like meetup.com yeah, meetup i went to a real estate meetup okay? okay and i'm like okay how can i get more properties you know uh, just onboard them quickly and i went to this meetup and there were four people there <laughs> I was like, okay, this is a waste of my time. Yeah. But, you know, I wanted to be, uh, I just talked to the people and be polite. And an hour goes by. And I'm like, okay, I, I headed out after an hour. But I gave my card out, right? And a couple weeks later, one of the real estate investors calls me up. And he's like, Mike, you know, I heard about your Airbnb thing. Like, let's talk about it. And he, he mentions, he's like, well, I have multiple properties. So there could be like a beneficial relationship here. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, interesting. So I meet up with him. And he basically says, look, I'm all in on this idea. But... I want to do a revenue share. So now I'm thinking, wait a minute. So you're saying like, I don't even have to rent the properties from you. We can just do a revenue share. So, and he's like, yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. So he sets them all up. He, it's his properties. I don't have to pay any rent. And now I make profit, straight profit on these Airbnbs. Didn't have to pay rent, no security deposit, no anything. Completely wow. zero money down. And it's like ultimately scalable. Yeah, you can. it doesn't cost any money to onboard any new properties. That's so crazy. these are the two kind of ways you can do it. Yeah. And, you know, it depends if you have capital. Sure, you can go and rent them. If you want to just go straight profit strategy, 
then you do the revenue share, whatever's best for you. And so what's amazing though, is your treasure map strategy is so good that the numbers will be so solid that you're not throwing a dart in the air. So even if you want to go ahead and rent, that's the maximum exposure that you're putting out there. But what I love about this is a lot of people that are looking to do this, maybe they don't have the 2,600 a month to immediately go out there. And the bigger thing is if they're trying to build a traditional online business, they're going to need some money to buy ads, get up pages, hire outsourcers, manage it all, learn, take courses. But with yours, I mean, use the treasure map strategy, find a location, probably just have more conversations. Not everyone's going to be willing to do a rev share, but all right, talk to five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten people. It's a numbers game. By before you know it, someone will say, OK, I'm, I'm ready to, to, to hear more about this. And then all of a sudden you're in business with zero money down. The only thing that you have, which Mike is willing to offer us, is knowledge. You know how to do it and you know how to list it. You don't have to meet people, talk to people, process payments. You don't have to do any of that. Yeah, that's, that's the coolest thing about, you know, working with a company like Airbnb. You know, they handle the scheduling, right? They handle all the bookings. They handle all the payment processing. They handle the customer service. All you got to do is put your property on the platform that you're renting out or, you know, it's not even your property. Right. And Airbnb does 98 percent of the work for you. That's just that's this is amazing. Uh, you know, before we do talk about. Finding the property and getting into the systems like how have you been able to teach this to people like you're Mike, you're you're an engineer. You work for the big B, you know, you're a smart dude. I could tell you're a very smart guy. You, you sound like an analytical person, numbers person. That's not me. So have you been able to teach you know, normal people how to do this, like just average Joes who are looking to start making some money. Um, tell us a little bit about how you've been able to repeat this, this success. Yeah, absolutely. I think the biggest thing is that because it's so step by step, really anybody can do it. I mean, I've had hundreds of students now and I've seen people, whether it's, you know, they just work a retail job and they were able to do this and mm. within 30 to 60 days, get their first Airbnb up and running. Uh, people who maybe work in corporate that have gotten their first Airbnb, now they've quit their job and now they're traveling the world. You know, really all walks of life yeah. are doing this. And um, what kind of numbers are you seeing? Or, or what's like maybe the most successful students you've had? And then maybe what's the average yeah. story you hear? Um, let's see, so one of my students actually just sent me a screenshot the other day and I feel like he's competing with me. <laughs> he sent me a screenshot and he's like, look, this is one month with one property and it was $31,000. Wow, thirty-one thousand yeah. from one property. property in one month, That's and I mean, now I feel like okay. I was that his first property, or has this he wasn't been his first property? So he's, he's got others that he's yeah, making from. Yeah, so he, his total might be forty, forty-five thousand. Right. He's made right. that month. That's yeah. just one property. Yeah. That's incredible. That's completely like passive. I mean, it's yeah. Airbnb doing all the hard work. So this was, um, again, that was like let's say a top student. Yeah. But normally it could be anywhere from, you know, a thousand to $2,000 a month in profit. I mean, you can just get a one bedroom. Like I, you know, I started with a two bedroom, 2,600. It could be intimidating for some people. You can do this with a one bedroom yeah. apartment that costs a thousand dollars a month. And so we've established that you're going to take on the challenge to prove to us, um, that it doesn't matter if you live in suburbia in the United States, it doesn't matter where you live. You trust me, you're within a, a driving distance. Uh, and I've, kind of seen some of the coursework, so I, I know that you are. What about a lot of our listeners and a lot of Learn Nation doesn't live in America? Mm -hmm. What if they don't live in America? Is Airbnb still an opportunity for yeah, them? Yeah, I would say if you don't, wherever you live, yeah. it, either in the United States or not, just go on Airbnb right now and type in your location and you'll see hundreds and hundreds of listings. Wherever there's hotels, there's Airbnb. And it's basically everywhere in the world. I mean, there's there's, I think, 150 million users on Airbnb. There's about um, 3,000, or sorry, 3 million listings. Wow. So, I mean, it's it's completely worldwide at this point. <laughs> 3 million listings, that's great. So it's a marketplace where people are already there. It, it's, they're looking for what you're offering. You just have to make sure you show up in front of them and you show us exactly how to do that. So uh, let's, um, all right, now let's move into to really figuring things out. So what I want to do is I want to go into round number three, and we're going to talk about finding properties, and we're going to okay. give some clues away. Now, the challenge we're going to face with this is, of course, you got to watch him do it to really learn how to do it, and this isn't that kind of training. So that's why we established that there will be some free training after this. But um, let's talk through it. So round number three, 
I want to find property. Someone's listening right now. They're starting to get interested. They feel like, man, I could probably do this, especially because even if they don't want to rent the property, they could just partner and just have no expense. How do you go about it at a high level? How do you mm -hmm. find properties? So there's a couple of different softwares that we use to see the exact revenue in different areas. Okay. Right. But let's say you just wanted to start, you know, the, the simplest way. I'd say go on Airbnb right now and you can start to look at the properties that are charging the most. Okay. So we can start to get an idea of the property type, the, um, the locations. And again, we're looking for certain patterns. Okay. So we want to see again, the areas we want to see specifically, like, for example, in, uh, in Fort Lauderdale, one of the biggest things is properties that are doing the best have a pool, right? So you'll start to, it's very apparent, like as you start to look at several different listings. So should they go to Airbnb and type in their local city? Like how, what do they type in first? Mm -hmm. What do they put in the search bar? So, and again, in the training, you'll see how I start with where you are, but you know, you're, the whole point is to find the most profitable location. Yes. And I think the biggest misconception is that people think they need to do it where they live. But here's the thing, like this business is supposed to be run without you being there ever. Yeah. Right. So what I teach people is look, find where the gold is. Okay. Even if that's 45 minutes away, two hours away, you only have to be there one time to get it set up, right? Put out the towels. We use digital locks. So there's keyless entry, right? Check guests check in, they check out. You never have to be there. You never see them. I have students who have properties that they've never even been to. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Cause you said you have students who buy properties on the other side of the country. Right. Not exactly. buy, they rent or, you know, use Airbnb. Exactly. So, but the point is in the training, you'll see how I, you know, find the most profitable location, but you can, let's just say for the basic yeah. um, example here, you can start with where you live and you just want to look for some patterns. Okay. You're looking for the property types that are doing the best. Is it a two bedroom? Is it a three bedroom? Um, you know, what kind of features do they have? Again, is there a pool? Maybe you have um, a spiral staircase or what are those things? You want to read through the descriptions. You want to read through the titles and you're just looking for those patterns. Okay. That's the first step. Got it. All right. So what, what you were telling me earlier when we were talking about this is usually you'll find that any student that you've talked to within about a one mile radius, there's almost always a location, like at least 90% of the time, one hour radius of where they are, they'll find a place that's Airbnb able, if that's a word. Um, I guess the first thing that comes to my mind, right? So it's so funny. And I want to make sure anyone who's listening to this addresses this. You said, hey, in Fort Lauderdale, the properties that do the best are the properties with a pool. And in my head, I screamed. I'm like, pool, expensive. Ah. Hmm. But what I start to realize is that's the paradigm that we've built whenever we talk about real estate. Hmm. Anything that's great is going to be expensive. But in this case, it doesn't matter because you're not buying it. The worst case scenario is you're renting it, but there's an option even beyond that. So if you're going to go now, might as well get the best because it's not costing you much more, exactly. but you're going to rent it for so much more. So when I'm on Airbnb.com, how do I go about seeing what's doing the best? Is there a certain filter I can use? So let's say I go to Airbnb.com and I type in, you know, Gaithersburg, Maryland, which is where I am right now, or Rockville, Maryland. Rockville's a bigger city or Bethesda, Maryland, which is definitely a, right up 15 minutes up the street. Do I then go filter by reviews, filter by, is there, I don't know what the filters mm -hmm. are. So is there a way to kind of shortcut that search process? Yeah. You can filter by price, filter by price, you know, and then you'd want to just see, okay, what's charging, who's charging the most money. Cause the whole, the whole really business idea here is we want to be able to charge a premium price. We're not going to compete on price. We don't want to charge, you know, $50 a night. We want to figure out how can I charge Three hundred dollars, five hundred dollars a night, a thousand dollars a night, mm. right? So we're looking to attract a premium buyer, a premium customer. Okay, so that's one way to do it. But like I said, the the real nitty gritty details is we use tools that allow us to see the exact amount of revenue that each property is making. So it's there's no guesswork, right? If we go on Airbnb.com, we can kind of get an idea, but really um, we want to use tools. One of the tools is called Air DNA. Air D N A. Yeah. Com? Yeah. Okay. Now with this tool, we can actually see how much revenue each zip code is, is making on average. We can see exactly how much each property is making we on Airbnb. Just, it's, it's a tool for, it will show you Airbnb. the, the revenue for Airbnb and other platforms like VRBO. Wow. So you can really dial in and 
that removes all of the guesswork. And you can even filter by top properties and by two bedroom, three bedroom, uh, what percentile they're in. Like you get everything. And this is where the, yeah. you know, the real data comes into play. It's so crazy. I mean, right there, we could just stop this interview and it was totally worth its weight in gold. There is a website that literally gives you all this information. Uh, I have a question for you. This sounds amazing. And I'm already listening to you and my head is racing with ways to do this. Uh, why aren't more people doing it? Are more people doing it? Is this just something a lot of people are doing and they're just quiet about? Is, is, is it that when I rent from Airbnb, I might be actually renting from someone like yourself? Are people doing it and are quiet or is this just not been discovered yet? Mm -hmm. I mean, this is definitely a growing industry and people are catching on. Um, you know, you'll see like there are Airbnb management companies, right? Mm -hmm. Companies that have like 100 listings or things like that. And that's becoming more popular, right? Because you have these landlords that see the opportunities that are looking for people to manage, you know, on short term rentals on Airbnb and VRBO. So if anything, landlords are becoming aware like, hey, someone could do this for so me. So this is still a good time to do this. This is still a great time to get in. It's not like the boats, you know, floated by. That's why I asked you, when did you get your first property? Mm -hmm. It's only 2017. I mean, it wasn't ages ago. So to me, it kind of feels like, hey, if you want to get in, now might be the right time to be doing this. Is that a correct statement? Yeah, I mean, the thing is, Airbnb users, I mean, the, the popularity of Airbnb is just growing and growing and growing. So there's constant growth. You know, there's less and less people using hotels, more and more people using Airbnb. Like think about your, you know, think about your last vacation, you might have even stayed in Airbnb, right? So it's a huge industry, it's only growing. Um, I think on average, people spend about 160 million on Airbnb each night. So people, <laughs> guests, wow. you know, it's, it's basically a, I think it's like a $6 billion industry just for Airbnb that excludes VRBO and bookings.com. Yeah. So it's, That's crazy. it's a huge growing industry. Man, I love it. All right, so listen, I wanna summarize this. Uh, go to Airbnb, type in your local area, filter by price, know and start seeing what the common trends are of the companies, or sorry, of the properties that are renting for the most, $300 minimum, really, you should try to go for. You wanna go on premium, not on discount, makes total sense, don't compete on price. And um, airdna.com, love that. It's gonna give you all of the details of what zip codes, what they're making on these very sites like VRBO and Airbnb. Now, of course, now the best part is you're gonna get a chance to watch Mike do this, physically do this and then rinse and repeat what he does in your local area. So for that, again, when the free training is out, you'll be able to go to learn.com, uh, L-U-R-N.com forward slash B-N-B and see it. All right, uh, Mike, if you're good with it, I wanna move into the next round. I wanna go to round number four. I wanna talk about actually securing the property. All right, so round number four. So, found it. I got myself, I know what you teach. Um, you teach like, make a list, right? Don't just find one and then just dream of only getting that one. And you're not gonna win them all and we'll talk about why. So make a list. How many should I have on my list before I decide to journey out and go into mm -hmm. step two? Honestly, the biggest thing that I teach all my students is talk to landlords, talk to landlords, talk to landlords. And I'm starting to experiment with different strategies like texting landlords, and that actually seems to be working pretty well. But at the end of the day, the bread and butter is go out and talk to landlords. Um, what I did when I first got started was I actually scheduled like nine or 10 showings back to back on the same day. And that's just the easiest way to do it. And that first day, about eight people said no to me, but one person said yes. And that's all it takes, right? So in the beginning, I would tell people, just get a list, whether that's five, eight, 10, whatever it may be, and just do them back to back. And you're gonna get better and better at um, basically talking to the landlords. And then it's just a matter of time before someone wants to work with you. And you can do these on, like you could do it on Saturday, right? Yeah, you absolutely. Don't have to take a weekday off to right. do it. So here's a question that I can tell most people might be thinking that I had initially, and you answered it for me. But why would someone say no? I mean, I'm going to go to a landlord to rent their property. I would expect a hundred. Like if I went right now and I'm like, hey, I want to rent your property. I want to move in. I can't imagine I'd ever get rejected for that request. But you got one out of nine. That means eight people said no. Why did they say no? When you're first starting out, you know, you got to explain this idea and it's a new concept to landlords, right? So they don't get it, right? The, the idea of you're going to have multiple people coming in and out, you're going to use right. it on Airbnb. Exactly. Okay. So it's, it's as simple as 
and it took me a while to figure this out, but it really just comes down to air, uh, landlords just care about, are they going to get their rent on time and is their property going to be taken care of? That's what it comes down to. Mm. And what I found out is that as long as you can clearly tell them like, look, I'm a professional short-term rental operator. People are going to be coming into this property. I'm going to be vetting them. I'm going to be uh, managing everything. And the reason why you'd want to work with me is because I'm going to take care of your property better than anybody else ever could. And that's the real idea. It's like, okay, yeah, you can have a college student come and live in here, but I'm going to be professionally cleaning this property. I'm going to have cleaners come in professionally clean it multiple times a week. And I even show them like, once you get a couple Airbnbs, you start to get referrals, obviously you get a lot of credibility and I'll even show them like before and after pictures of properties that I've had where they see it's actually cleaner. It's actually nicer after. Right. So they start to realize like, oh, this person's going to take care of this property better than anybody else could because it, his business depends on it. Mm. Right. So once you get that point across, it's pretty easy. Um, the other thing is obviously they want to make sure they get they're going to get money. They're going to get their, their checks. Right. So basically what I tell them is, look, you're going to get automatic payment. I even send it before the first of the month. So you're always going to because I'm a professional business. You're, you never have to worry about your payments mm. and you get those two points across. That's the easiest way to go about it. So that makes perfect sense. It's just a new idea. It's a new concept, which is the only reason why eight out of nine people might say no. But who cares? The thing I think about is this. You establish a property. You get one. You know what? Let's just say it's not a runaway hit like yours. We don't make like eight thousand dollars a month from it or seven. We make maybe a thousand or fifteen hundred net per month. Uh, I mean, if I could do this for the next two months where every Saturday. So during the week in the nights, I just, my goal is every day of the week to find one property or maybe one and a half or two properties. That way by Saturday, I have a full day book booked. I go out and get one property to say yes. I have like 10% close rate, which is not great, but who cares? And if I could just do this for two months and idealistically speaking, I grab a property a week. I have four properties a month, two months. I now have eight properties. I have no liabilities. If things break at the property, it ain't my problem. It's the landlord's problem. I didn't put out much, if anything, of cash flow, and it's probably already started to return fast. I mean, you made your first booking in 13 minutes. So in the course of eight weeks, I could have potentially built myself a six figure a year recurring passive income by having taken eight days to go out and have some fun seeing properties. Oh, absolutely. And it really just depends on how how much are you want to um, start with? So for example, you can start with a one bedroom. You can get a two bedroom, you can get a three bedroom. I personally like to rent the properties because I'm so confident in the revenue numbers. You make more. Yeah, you make more, right? So you, we could do this this weekend, go out and get three properties and have a $100,000 net business. And I'm gonna show that on the training. I just had like an idea for a future. Like I think we should actually do it. I think we should do like a reality day where we just <laughs> go awesome. out and, and we close a few properties. And so after you find the area for me, heck, we might even do that. That might be like a the fighting entrepreneur live, a whole day episode where we go out and we just like we find properties and do it. I'm happy to do it. I love it. I'm, I'm, I'm all in. Um, this is this is so cool. So it's just a conversation with a landlord. There's really nothing much more different about it. You're picking one of two routes. That's it's a personal choice for those listeners. You're picking the route of, you know what? I want to make more and I believe in this and you know, I don't worry. I'm not worried about putting some money down for rent because you're only putting like the first, you know, money down. Or you're thinking I don't got money for rent. Like I want to get some cash flow coming first, so I want to establish a partnership deal for my first right. one or two, get yeah. the cash flow coming and then I can start renting yeah. properties. Right. It's really up to them to choose that. And then yeah. that drives the conversation with the landlord. Yeah, yeah, exactly. A couple of questions. Do you, do you, do you um, allude to this to landlords? So like, let's say I reach out, I find a property, mm -hmm. I reach out to the landlord. Do I say anything other than, I just want to come see your place to rent it. And then I wait to have a conversation when I see them. Generally, that's what you do. Okay. And it's just the easiest way. Um, do you ever find yourself that you're not talking to the landlord? Like when you show up is... That's the first question you ask in the text. Like when you're scheduling showing, like, are you the landlord? Okay. You get a yes. Okay. When can I, sh when I see it? What if they say no? If they say no you, and you got, you try to get talk to the landlord because the biggest thing is you want to be talk to somebody who can actually make the decision. Make the decision, yeah. I've had this work with real estate agents before, um, but the easiest way is just to go with the landlords. Now, I do want to touch on the fact that, you know, when I first started, yeah, it took me nine tries before I got a yes, but as you get better and you start to practice the script a little bit, 
and you have more properties, I mean, and now it's a lot, lot easier to get mm. yeses, right? Because you come with a little bit more credibility. You know what to say, yeah. right? It's just a matter of practice, really. Uh, that's all. How many do you think, if you went out now, like, let's say we did do that one day live and we picked an area, like, what's a, what would be a close rate that you would think is good? I mean, I could just speak to my past experience, right? Yeah. Let's say the last time I was talking to landlords, I scheduled five in the day and I think three of them said yes. But that's because I have a lot of practice with oh, it. Oh, totally. You know? I, so you're starting at one out of nine and the potential is once you're, once you're Mike's level, uh, you're uh, three out of five. Now, I want everyone to know, like, Mike, you've only been doing this for a couple of years. So it's not like you're bringing 30 years of experience yeah. into it. So it seems like someone can escalate their knowledge pretty quickly. Yeah, absolutely. And I have students who they talk to seven landlords and they got two. So that's, that's pretty good. Yeah. Um, one of my other students, he just said he practiced the script like 25 times, like in a mirror. And it was super easy. He got his first one, just first person he talked to. So that's it just cool. it's just a matter of practice is really what it comes down to. Yeah. Awesome. Whew. All right. I, I kind of am getting a little antsy. I want to get out of here and go go talk to some people and get some passive income going. Um, but I do want to move into our round number uh, five. I think we're up to because this is the part that scares me. And that is I don't want headaches. I don't want anyone calling me. I don't want to do this is the one thing that kept me away from real estate for so many years. And the only reason I'm even doing the, the real estate that I am doing now is because we're totally passive like you know, no one will even know we have any ownership in those real estates. So let's move into round number five. And so, all right. So round number five is step number three. You promised me that we can automate this so that I do not have to show up with a plunger uh, to, you know, take care of the dirty business in someone's bathroom. Like, well, how can we make it so that the only time I ever see the property is when I went to sign it. Absolutely. So this is a mistake that when I first got started again, I didn't know what I was doing. So I got that first property, right? And I was still working. So I would, you know, when someone was coming to the property, I would run there, try to unlock the door for them, let them in, you know, and they would leave. I would go back, try to clean it. <laughs> like I'm like, it was your baby. I, what am I doing? Yeah. yeah. But I would spend like all this time, like making sure like the sheet was perfect. You know, <laughs> like, just like, no, like make sure you're focusing on acquiring more properties, not, you know, are the sheets perfect? But anyways, the point is I was working in the business, was constantly working in the business. And I thought to myself, how can I just remove myself? What's the first step to that? And the easy solution was just first off, get a digital lock, like keyless entry, connects to your, your phone. Um, now they have them sync to Airbnb. So every time the guest checks out, it automatically like the lock knows to change the code and it syncs with Airbnb. It's pretty cool actually. Wow, that yeah. is really cool. Yeah, so all that's automated. So keys done, cool. What about cleaning? It's as simple as hiring a cleaner or hiring a, a cleaning company and giving them a checklist. Like, this is what I want you to do, do it, right? So between, between those two things, now I'm at like 90% of it was basically automated, but I still wanted to get like all the way there, right? So sometimes guests would ask a message or they would, you know, what's the address? What's the Wi-Fi password? So I found a tool, a software that's called Smart BNB, and it's kind of like, exactly what it sounds like. It's like smart messaging. So what it does is once there's a booking, it sends an automatic message and it also schedules your cleaners automatically. And throughout the state, it automatically sends them all the messages they need, right? So, and it even has, not to get too fancy, it even has artificial intelligence and can pick up like their questions like and, and reply like with a bank of your stored answers. So, <laughs> you know, if you want to get cool. fancy, you can. So, so for example, would it know that I just opened the door for the first time and then would message me my Wi-Fi code at that time? It would, what we do is we just schedule like, okay, your check-in time is three. I'm gonna send you, you know, 48 hours before, I'm gonna send you the code to access the okay. unit, the address, you know, all the details that you need basically. That's awesome. Things like that, we yeah. do it on time, yeah. So between that and then also, if you wanna go one more layer, you can get a virtual assistant that does, you well, know, yeah. manages the rest of it for yeah, you. Yeah, because, of course, if you've got yourself five, six, seven, eight properties, which why not? It's not hard to do. Right. You can have a virtual assistant that is the point of contact for them if they have uh, any concerns. So you could literally not exist right. for the tenants. And the best part is if something breaks, like going back to the plunger example, uh, that's not your thing. It's the landlord's thing. Right. So it would be the same virtual assistant 
who would communicate with the landlord. Now, again, I say virtual assistant and people are thinking, oh my God, that's expenses. I don't, you, you don't need it. I'm telling you this would be when you have five, six, seven properties. In the meantime, that's the only time you might get a message. If something broken that you just then need to literally forward the message to said landlord and let them go fix it. But this is another reason why you don't want to buy the property because you just don't want to be the person responsible for that aspect mm -hmm. of, of yeah, the operation. And, and honestly, you know, we, we use virtual assistants and they're like from the Philippines, for example, and you know, they're like four or $5 an hour, for example. Yeah. Um, so it's super cheap to, to get the, that part of it automated. Yeah. And, and if you use these virtual assistants from the Philippines, they will be happily, ha they happily work us hours or whatever hours you want. So wherever hours your right. properties are in, they work. It's really neat. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at this and I, and I'm kind of thinking to myself for all of our learn nation students, we have a lot of students, Mike, that will say, God, I, I wish I just had a little bit more capital to begin with. And you've gone on to build other businesses now. I mean, you you are you are doing much bigger things. It's not like you only do Airbnb, but from talking to you, this was your it was your angel investor. It was your funding source. It was where you and so many students come to me and all say, you know, I, I wish I could just you know had five thousand dollars so I'd have the money for Facebook ads or for this or to get my book written or. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting here thinking, here you go. It's a weekend, mm -hmm. and you can literally create forget five thousand. You can create five thousand a month and then be free to quit your job and then really build whatever dream business you want to build or just keep building more of this. Right. Because like you said, we're just getting started with Airbnb is starting to climb now. Uh, pretty powerful stuff. Uh, geez, I, I, I really am impressed with it. And I want to encourage everybody to go to learn.com forward slash BNB. All right, just learn lurn.com forward slash B N B. Here's what's gonna happen. They're gonna go there, you're gonna put your name and email in. We got some amazing free training from Mike. We're demos. Like watch him do it. That's the important part. You watch him do it. It's really cool. And then you can take what he does and do it in your area, and you will see live in action and proof that there's huge opportunity. Now, of course, there are intricacies that we didn't get into today that can really help you multiply your income into multiple six figures. And that's what we're going to get into in the training. We have an amazing course that's going to be live inside of Learn Nation as well. So there's the free training. And then there is the BNB Empire course that either when you're watching this, it's about to come out or it's already out. I'm not sure. Go check it out. Go in, log in to learn lurn.com and you can see that. But um, this is powerful stuff. It's crazy because I want to ask you more stuff, Mike, but I don't have anything else to ask. I mean, this is a very simple model that anyone can deploy. Plus, you've offered to do all this other free training that I want to send everybody into. Uh, Mike, what would you, at any closing words to people mm -hmm. that are watching this? Like, I can tell you one thing right now. I feel this and I feel, I, I can like feel my audience. They're too good to be true, Mike. Just, just sounds too good to be true. Can you answer that for people? Yeah, absolutely. I would say, you know, Obviously, just like anything, you there's gonna take some work, right? You gotta go in and talk to landlords, whether that's texting them, talking to them in person, you know, you gotta talk to people, right? <laughs> <laughs> Must talk um, to humans. Yeah, so there's that. Um, but I would say the biggest thing is like, maybe you feel like, well, I can't get started, I wanna rent a property. You know, like I mentioned, a lot of my students just go and do the partnership agreement, the revenue share, and that's the easiest way to get started. Um, so I would just say, you know, regardless of what situation you're in, Go ahead, start talking to landlords because that's where you start getting deals on the table. I, that's what I tell my students all the time. Um, the other thing is make sure you watch this training because yes. I'm gonna break it down. You're gonna see exactly like where I start looking and where I end up seeing where the real money is yeah. and how easy it really is to get started. And, I'm, and then I'm gonna go on to websites like Zillow, Craigslist, and actually find properties that we could and landlords that we could contact like today. and. These landlords, after they watch, after your students watch the people, probably get blown up with messages yeah. because we're going to find hyper profitable properties. Stay out of my area. That's my. This is my free console. So don't you all start blowing up people in in the Maryland area. Is mine. All right, uh, and Virginia, and DC, and uh, North Carolina, and Delaware. Stay away from those areas. No, I'm just joking. Uh, th it's going to be really fun to see. I will throw this disclaimer out on behalf of Mike. Don't do this without watching his training. And if you can become a part of his course where the, yes, we do charge for it, but you're going to be shocked and appalled at just how little we charge. It's, it's the benefit of being a Learn Nation member. This is what we bring to you. This is what we say, right? This is the home, the transformational home for entrepreneurs. So I encourage you to take all of it in. Learn. 
first. That's why we call ourselves learn. You got to learn first because don't run out and start talking to landlords. Make sure you're talking to the right landlords. That's going to be super important. And there's a reason why Mike has come out and done all of this training because because it is that simple. And for those of you who are thinking, is it too good to be true? Let me just ask you this. Would I bring something like that to you? I wouldn't. It's that amazing. It's had me completely um, enthralled in this model and I just can't wait to go out and do it. So, uh, Mike, if someone wants to stalk you right now, follow you, learn more about you, where can they go? Where can they learn more about you? Um, you know, I'm not super active on like social media or anything. Not me neither. Um, but you can go to my website. Um, it's actually my first name and middle name. So it's Mike Zave, Mike, M I K E and then Zave X A V E.com. All right. And you can opt in for some additional training yeah, and some training more Mike like goodness. So yeah. Mike Zave, M I K E X A V E.com. I like that. Sounds like a, sounds like a X Men. <laughs> That's what I was going for. You like know. Zave, you know, like I'm thinking like lasers shoot out of him or something. It's awesome. All right, listen, thank you so much for watching. Learn.com, L U R N.com forward slash B N B for the free training from Mike. MikeZave.com for more uh, amazing stuff from Mike. And if you're watching this on YouTube right now, you got to come on. You got to leave Mike a comment here, man. He literally flew down here just to do this, to bring all this amazing goodness to you. So let's give him a big shout out. Let's thank him right below. Leave a comment. All right, hit subscribe on the YouTube channel, hit the thumbs up icon, hit the bell icon, and if you're listening to us on your preferred favorite podcast platform, make sure you subscribe to us there too. Make sure you leave us an amazing five-star review there as well. And listen, Learn Nation, what do I always say? When life pushes you, stand straight, smile, and push it the heck back. Get over to learn.com forward slash BNB. Make sure you are a member at LURN.com. This is Onyx and Gall. I will see you soon and come on fighting entrepreneurs. Go out there and fight for your dreams. Until next time, talk to you later. Thanks for listening to the Fighting Entrepreneur with your host, Onyx and Gall.